Hi, I'm Katie. Welcome to my channel. I'm a travel agent and today I'm here to talk to you about visiting the monuments and memorials of the National Mall in Washington, D.C. First, let's get the lay of the land. Here's a look at the National Mall and you will notice that most of the museums are on the right-hand side and most of the memorials and monuments are on the left-hand side. Zooming into the west side of the National Mall where the Tidal Basin is, you will see that that is where most of the monuments and memorials can be found. Now there are other monuments and memorials sprinkled around other parts of the mall and other parts of Washington DC, but we're really going to focus on the heavy hitters here. The National Mall is very walkable, though if you do have mobility issues, each monument and memorial does have handicapped parking located close to the monument. Now, if you're not staying walking distance to the National Mall, there's of course taxis, ride share, you can drive and park, although beware there's not a ton of parking very close. You're going to probably have to walk a little bit. Then there is always the Metro, which is very easy to access, and you are going to want the Smithsonian National Mall stop, which is on the blue, silver, and orange lines. Once you get to the mall, you also have the option of renting bikes to bike around between the monuments if you don't want to walk. All right, let's talk about the monuments and memorials of the National Mall. So let's start with the most prominent, the Washington Monument. So obviously, if you just want to see the Washington Monument, that's super easy, especially if you are going to be on the mall. I do suggest getting a little bit closer to get a better look at the stonework and all of that. Now, if you want to get a better look at the monument and from the monument, you can go inside and all the way up to the top. If you want to go to the top of the monument, you are going to need a ticket. You get a ticket by going online one day in advance at 10 a.m. on the National Parks website and purchasing a ticket. Now, the tickets are only $1. It is basically free and that is a processing fee. These tickets go very, very quickly. So absolutely be ready to go before 10 a.m. Set up your login and all of that and be ready to purchase as soon as you can. And have a backup if you can't get it to possibly go on a different day. Have a plan that maybe you can swap a museum in with this or something else that doesn't require ticketing. Now tickets are timed, so you do need to make sure that you are there on time for the time that you have obtained. The monument is also notorious for having to shut down the elevator and the view from the top. It has been shut down often, so be prepared for it to possibly not be operating while you're visiting. Before you visit, make sure you take a good look at the security precautions. Obviously, there is high security involved in visiting the Washington Monument, and there are a lot, a lot, a lot of items that you cannot bring with you in your bag including things like umbrellas. So make sure that you take a look at that list and that your bag is good to go before you get there. Now, once you have tickets, you get through security, you're gonna enter a small lobby on the main level that has a little display about George Washington. And then you are going to board the elevator for a quick trip up to the top. And there's a nice video from the park service talking to you about the Washington Monument on your way up. Then you will walk out onto the observation deck the observation deck is 500 feet tall and you will get beautiful views of the city and beyond on all four sides of the monument. There's signage telling you what everything you're looking at is and some historical photos to compare what the views used to look like. When you've got your fill of the views, you're going to walk down one level to the museum level, which has a bunch of displays about the building of the monument, the history of the monument, and all of that so you'll have a chance to learn more about the Washington Monument. When you're all done, you will take the elevator from the museum floor back down to the entrance, and on the way, the elevator will do a bit of a presentation where it will slow down and illuminate the elevator shaft to show you some of the special stonework that is in the elevator shaft that was donated from different states and cities during the building of the monument. There's no gift shop or dining or anything in the monument or right at the base of the monument. There is a National Parks Visitor Center very close to the base of the monument and they have a few souvenirs that you could purchase. If you are visiting with a wheelchair or mobility concerns, the Washington Monument is wheelchair accessible. You can wheel right on to the elevator and right off and they will take you from the first floor, the observation floor, 
to the museum floor on the elevator, you don't have to deal with the stairs. For everyone, be aware that it is pretty cramped in there, so if you have some claustrophobia concerns, I don't think this is for you. Just be prepared that it is a cramped space. And if you have a fear of heights, you cannot see out that you are up high unless you're looking out the window, so do with that information as you will. Next up is the World War II Memorial. This is one of the newer memorials on the mall. It is situated between the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. The sight lines here are awesome. This is one of my favorite memorials to take photos of. There is detail everywhere. There's a pillar and a wreath for each state, and everyone's favorite part is to find and take a picture with their home state. I definitely recommend stopping, taking a look at this one, reading all the plaques, and noticing all of the little detail. Now there are National Park Visitor Centers, and they're usually small like stands or kiosks throughout the National Mall, around the monuments and memorials, and you can stop here to get more information about each monument. They also sometimes will lead tours, and this is where you would go to find that sort of information. Right past the World War II Memorial, you will find the reflecting pool, and at the other end of the reflecting pool is the Lincoln Memorial. On your way up the steps, make sure you stop and look about halfway up the steps in the middle. There is engraving that shows you the exact spot where Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. This is one of the most popular memorials in Washington, D.C. It's one of the most iconic sites in America, probably. So you will absolutely want to go up the stairs, check out the chamber, see Lincoln, and make sure to turn around and then check out the views of the Washington Monument from the Lincoln Memorial. Also make sure to walk around the whole top, including the back side, to see the views from there. Before you leave, don't miss the small museum that is in the base of the memorial that talks about both building the memorial itself and the life of Abraham Lincoln. North of the Lincoln Memorial, you have the Vietnam War Memorial, which includes both the Wall of Names and statues of soldiers. If you're looking for a particular name, they are not in alphabetical order, so you will want to take a look at the guidebook that will help you find any name that you're searching for. The guidebooks can be found at both ends of the wall. To the east, you'll find the Constitution Gardens. This is a beautiful little spot that is really overlooked and the perfect place if you've packed a lunch or a snack to take a little break. And don't forget to go onto Signers Island in the middle of the pond where you will find a memorial to the signers of the Declaration of Independence and some great views of the Washington Monument. And to the south, you will find the Korean War Memorial, which is actually currently undergoing refurbishment. As we head further south, we are at the Tidal Basin, which has a trio of memorials and is home in the spring to the famous Washington, D.C. Cherry Blossoms and the Cherry Blossom Festival is, of course, a large event that goes on in Washington, D.C. every spring. So first up, we have the Thomas Jefferson Memorial. This one is huge. It's a beautiful memorial, and inside you'll find a statue of Thomas Jefferson, so you definitely want to make sure that you go up the steps, check out the inside statue hall, and make sure that you check out the sight lines of the Washington Monument and the rest of the Tidal Basin from here. It's really fun looking at the sight lines at all of these memorials. And there is a museum in the base of this memorial that talks about the presidency and life of Thomas Jefferson, as well as the history of the building itself. And keep your eyes peeled near the entrance and you'll see a stone that was laid by another president, FDR. There is a walking path all along the tidal basin and there are beautiful views from every angle. You can even get on the water in a paddle boat if you would like. And there's lots and lots of bird life. The next memorial is the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, and this is a really interesting and different one. Instead of one large statue, it is a series of statues and fountains and plaques that really walk you through the timeline of FDR's presidency around World War II and all of the things that were major milestones during his time. It's very interesting, and I love that there's even a statue of First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. 
and saving the newest memorial for last. We have the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. This is another one where you're going to want to check out the sight lines and look at what he is looking at and what he can see from his point on the Tidal Basin. It's a fabulous addition and it has quickly risen to the ranks of a must-see memorial in Washington, D.C. General tips for visiting the monuments. To beat the crowds, an early morning visit is your best bet. Later in the evening is also good. They are all beautiful at night as well. They are open 24-7, but you will see that a lot of the museums in, say, the Lincoln and Jefferson are not open early in, early in the morning or late in the evening. So you'd have to catch those during regular museum hours. You will also find public restrooms and some food and snack stands throughout the mall. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative and interesting and helpful for your next visit to Washington, D.C. As always, I would love to be your travel agent to D.C. or any other travel destination. There are no fees for working with me as your travel agent, and I would love to help you have the most magical vacation possible. Remember to like this video and follow my channel for future Washington, D.C. and other travel videos. Thanks so much and have an awesome day.